So we will try to digress a little bit on the method because we are going to start um, the afternoon session. I'd like to introduce to you a culture of writing using high level standards. Okay, so I'd like to show you a sample of an article that uses many sources within the sentence. Okay. So let us begin with there is no author. And there is no author. That's elementary. That is elementary. One sentence. One sentence. I use one author. I use one author. That's high school. That's high school. If I use two to four. If I use two to four. Authors in a sentence. Five or more. Five or more. Then at least master's or PhD. So, I'll show you an article written by students like you, and this has already been published as part of a class requirement, in which the article uses 232 sources. So you can imagine how long is the bibliography with 232 um, samples. It doesn't come out. That was our problem this morning. Um, try to pull a spam. Maybe in a short while, especially the press. The paper is a review paper. Uh, just like what you found this morning, pull on a review. So, a review paper, this one. So, can anybody say this? Okay. What is the difference? What is the when I will build a house, without an architect's plan, and with an architect's plan, which one is better? Yeah. Yeah. The one with the largest plan. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you write a search and there is no literature review, it is like building a house without an architectural plan. Because the research review will tell you what to look for and how to look for and what results they expect to get. So that is the function of a research review. Why it should be done first? Because before anything else, before buying the materials in the house, you need a plan. So, an architect's plan is like a research review article. Okay. So, if you will take a look at here, there is a course in the board. After this little presentation, I will make you a member of ORC. ORC.org is like a bank. So, can you name a bank in Cambodia? Bank. B A N K. Bank. 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 Uh, so, Bank of Cambodia, do you have it here? Yeah. Or Cambodia National Bank? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, when you deposit money, you have an account number. Yes. And so, the money of the bank comes from the people who contributed money through their accounts. So, in the world of research, when you have an RC number, an RC number, all your articles online will go to the repository. So, if the website, for example, of this center will no longer function, and then the journal or the, the sources are in that website, so you cannot access it anymore. But if you have an RC number, you can access that still online because it is deposited in this international organization. But I will do that only after my presentation to you. So can you screen, screen down? Okay, go. So. 
start uh, telling you begin with this one. So immediately when you look at this, what what strikes you immediately? A lot of citations. A lot of citations. So uh, is are there authors in the first sentence? Yes or no? Are there authors? Authors? Two. There are two. What about in sentence number nine? How many? One, two, three. So many sources, right? Yeah. Sentence number three. Number four. <laughs> number five, there is none. Okay. And then can you scroll down? We will not read the article. Same. 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 Something like this, are you going to ask the question? What is that? <laughs> or immediately we'll say, Oh, that's research. <laughs> right? So the physical appearance will tell us that is research. Because if you can't find sources, then that's not research. Okay. So that's the way it is now. And before, if you have five to ten sources in an article, in a thesis, that's okay. But now, no more. So I require my college students, okay, 500 sources to prepare. <laughs> Master students, they were 50 to 1,000. <laughs> oh, PhD students, more than 1,000. Because if you will write as thick as this one, and you will need so many in one sentence, then you will... You will be bankrupt by, by page five. Your authors will disappear, right? So that is why it's very, very important. So the question is why? Why like that? Please write this. We need authors, please write. Because research deals primarily with evidence. So we need authors because Research deals primarily with what is the word? Deals primarily with evidence. Uh, evidence. So these people give us the evidence that indeed there is such a thing as barrier to waves, cyclones, by means of dropping sediments and reducing breaking waves. Because there are two, there are three sources that actually tell us that this is the reality. So in the court of law, if there is a light negation, if there is no evidence, then you can't wait. So that's how important it is. Everybody say this. It's not enough, it's not enough. It's not enough. that you put in many authors. Put sense why they are there. Put sense. S-E-N-S-E. -S -E. Yeah. You must provide sense why you are getting the authors. Okay. So I'll give an example. Can you write this example? Okay. Pandemics. Pandemics. P-A-N-D-E-M-I-C-S. Pandemics kill more people than wars. Then why? Pandemics kill more people than wars. So that's an example. Hypothetical only. Wars means conflict. Conflict. Okay. Parentheses. Put parentheses. American author year close a semicolon African author year semicolon so you put one in American author year 
African author Renier semicolon just write that as I tell you mm -hmm. Asian author Asian Renier semicolon and then European European author year semicolon and then South American author year close parenthesis very good so how many sources can you underline one two three four five five so please underline them underline Thumb. dash dash okay. so there are how many five five so meaning when you get five authors you don't get them from the same country because that doesn't make sense so why put in five authors if they only come from the same country of origin but when you have a statement that is supported by five authors in this case, coming from five continents, the sentence becomes a global perspective. This is the difference. So when you do research, if you have a statement and you need a support, okay, whose author coming from Asia says this? Get that. Next. Uh, is there an author from Europe who says this? Yes. Put it. Is there an author from North America? Yes. Okay. I will need to find an author from South America. Yes. Australian author? Yes. Okay. Those parentheses with you. So inside your mind and in your heart, you know, you have created a sentence that has a global impact because that sentence is being shared by different writers coming from five distinct continents that is the value so if every time you write you put in authors coming from various regions of the world that's good research okay so can everybody say this despite good methodology, despite good methodology many researchers fail in the area of Perspective. What I mean by perspective, meaning if an article is created in Cambodia using a purely Cambodian perspective, then why should it be read outside of Cambodia? Right? So, for example, if I have a, if I am a student, I write a, a, a thesis in the Philippines, and then all are Filipino authors, authors of the Philippines, why should Cambodia read it? Why should the U.S. read it? But if from my thesis, many countries of the world are represented, when readers come across my paper, and they will see from the names, because from the names you will know where they come from. Right? Okay, so they will read it. This is because of the theory of author affiliation. What is that? Author, Af author affiliation theory. That readers tend to get attracted to read articles in which the authors are somehow related to them in some way. Right? So you will not understand this much if you don't go to another country. Like when I go to Brunei, you know, Bonai Jerusalem. I, I go there almost every year. And then I'm hungry. I go to a restaurant. Then I'll just speak in a dialect. Ining, ano masarap dito? I don't speak in Bonai and I don't speak in English because I know that Filipinos are the waiters and waitresses and the cooks there. Mm -hmm. And they will reply me and say, ano gusto mo? And then when I go to the stores because I want to haggle, for discounts, like I, I would like to buy a piece of jewelry or clothing, then I would say, Ini, ipatawad naman dito. I-discount na ko pa si ako, Filipino. Ah, sige, sige. And then she would go to her boss and say, She's a Filipino, he's my friend. Give him a discount. So I get a discount. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And then we never knew each other, but when we bump into each other, are you Filipino? Yes. And so we begin to feel like as though we need each other and we're like brothers. But in my home country, if we meet each other, we do not know each other. We do not anymore. We find each other. But in another country, 
these people ma matter to you. Like when you go to another country and then you find Cambodians, are you from Cambodia? Yes. Are you? Are you? Are you? So you talk about Cambodia. So what is that? Author affiliation. So the more authors from by diverse countries and many regions of the world, the more you will find and attract readers to your paper. Because your paper becomes a global ambassador of knowledge. Can you write that? My research should be a global ambassador of knowledge. Yes. My research should be a global ambassador of knowledge. Okay. So, is it clear to you? You need more and more authors to support your contention. All right. Yes. Now, after this, I'd like to show you the difference between quoting a material and paraphrasing it. Okay. What does it mean to quote a material versus to paraphrase a material? Can someone explain to us here? What happens when you quote a material? Okay. Meaning, you take exactly what was said, right? And then after that, you put in the name of the author, family name, and the year. Close for it says period. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was how I was trained when I would give my research before. But with thinking, the plagiarism detector, that is no longer correct. Mm -hmm. So which means that everybody say this. Same idea. Same idea. Same idea. You write it your way. You write it your way. Using your own style. Using your own style. That is original. If you copy, even if you have the author on the year, that is considered an ethical. Because your brain may not do anything. So you are a product of a copy paste generation. That is called copy paste. Yes, copy paste. So we will have a little exercise for that. Okay, so I'd like you to find a definition of something from the web. Okay, you, you write a word that you want to define, call on definition. But yesterday, I gave you an example. You, you write a, a term, and then call on definition, and then you are given a definition, right? Okay, so you'll have an example for that. Can you open a new tab? Okay, so right, pandemic. Okay, call on definition. Okay, so what is the difference between a pandemic, a lockdown, and an epidemic? Okay, so here you have sources prevalent over a whole country or the world. So now, an outbreak. Of a disease. Okay, some more. There. <laughs> Occurring over a wide geographic area and affecting an exceptionally high proportion of the population pandemic malaria. Okay, so that's an example of her. Anybody say this? I read that. I read that. Several times. Several times. Until I understand. Until I understand. Then after that, after that, I take it away. I take it away. And write the ideas my way. So you can you can interpret pandemic your way, but getting still the same idea. So you can say so for example like uh, pandemic a situation in which there is a there is a, an occurrence of a disease that affects a large percentage of the population elsewhere. Okay. Affecting many places or countries. 
So you will see that that is how I say it my way. Because I did not quote from the source. So everybody say this. As smart as possible, refrain from quoting from a source. Because quoting means copying things. Yes. So this is how I teach my students when they have their books. I say, you read it orally. While you read orally, you record your voice. And after that, you hear your voice. And after that, you close the book, and then you write it from memory. How you remember it was said, your way. And that is originality. All right, so uh, what I want you to do is find a definition of a term. And then you read it orally, and then you record your voice. And after you record your, your, your voice, you you get away from the text and then you hear yourself record the definition so that you have visual at the same time um, auditory then after that you understand and then you write it your way that is how a research should be written avoid taking it directly from the source okay so please input the word all right, and then get your cell phone. Talk to your cell phone and then read it. Afterwards, play, listen, and afterwards, you write it your way, the way you understand. Without reading the text. Okay, this is a three minute exercise. To, to train us not to copy from a source material. Yes. Okay, so another way to increase your comprehension is transfer that to your language. 
and then you ask Google Translate by pressing the bell to recite it. And then you hear it from your Cambodian uh, language. So that's another way, if it is in English, if it is in Cambodian, so two types of languages saying the same thing when it comes to our power of understanding. So what did we learn today? It is not good to always school a text. You have to comprehend and write the substance your way so that you will not be flat down of capitalism. Right? Okay. After this, I think um, uh, I wrote about you being able to download Mendeley desktop or Windows. You need to create an account first and then you can actually do this. So I want to know whether you, you all have Mendeley accounts. Not all, but some. Uh, so, both of you have, and it's working already? Yes. yes. Okay. Because if it is working already, then it is very easy for you to use many authors. Because if, if you want to find an author, you will just search it in your library, and then you insert, you click insert citation, and then it writes. Insert citation, it writes, it writes, it writes. Afterwards, Insert the bibliography, and then you have your bibliography. Yeah. Yeah. So that article was written because of the Mendeley. Mm -hmm. Okay, and all the other sources that you have downloaded, you can actually upload to Mendeley. And if you go to Google Scholar, at the bottom of the article of the line, there is their big, big text. There is Mendeley. Just click the Mendeley, and so Mendeley will automatically save that article for you in its database. Okay. So I understand that if, uh, if you can do that on your own tonight, that would be very, very good. Because it takes time to really know how to install and how to sync. Mm -hmm. Because there are two types of media links, the one online and the one on your desktop. Mm -hmm. And so if, if your files are synced in with the one on your desktop, you can use the desktop even if there is no um, online connectivity. Okay. So that's the beauty of Mendeley. Um, to my students, they prefer Zotero because Zotero is much easier to navigate than Mendeley. Because Mendeley appears to be the first one in the market. Do you know who designed the Mendeley? They were actually students in college who designed the Mendeley. It was purchased by Scopus Elsevier, and yes, Elsevier owns the Mendeley. And after that, there was another one which is called, it is called EndNote. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of this? Yes. Yeah. EndNote. But you have to pay. But I wonder how much is EndNote in Lazada? But yesterday I told you about Lazada. Uh, Lazada, where you can find very, very cheap materials. Can you go to Lazada? Lazada. 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 Do you know how much is end now? Two hundred fifty-nine dollars. One account. How much is the end now? Where is this end now? Somewhere. Okay. I hope we can find it. No, it's not found in the side. Okay. So we need to pay two hundred fifty-nine dollars. Okay. What is the difference between EndNote and Mendeley? Most of Mendeley sources, if not all of them, comes from open source, free. All right. Whereas in EndNote, the sources are just like just like yesterday. We had 
What website do I can, you, you can download an article or a book? Libgen. So in EndNote, the expensive sources, you can access on your own. So that is the difference. And they are, they are coming from a website called Clarivate Analytics. So they are the two superpowers, each having a referencing software. Can you write this? Referencing software. Referencing software. Or another way of saying is reference manager. Reference manager. So can you can you search for yes, this is and now? Yeah. So the price is 180. It becomes more expensive now. 83 uh, 33 euros. I think one euro is just about 48 pesos. This is now cheaper because of the sale. Okay. Can everybody say this with me? I dream, I dream that there will come a time that I can afford to buy. That I will no longer just be content. That we are no longer just meeting. Of what is given free. Of what is given free. Yes. That's very, very important. So one time it was a December and there was a vacation. And I was looking at my computer and there was a prompt from FBI. Federal Bureau Investigation. Telling me that I was using a counterfeit operating system. Yes, it was counterfeit. Because in the Philippines, you can buy cheaper like these laptops, but they do not have license OS. All right. And so I said, I'm a researcher. I have income for my work. Why am I not buying licensed software? And that is a profound question. Because if it were another person with a lower education, we could understand. But I'm a doctor, I'm a PhD, I'm a researcher, I know about ethics, and why am I using counterfeit softwares? So using my credit card, I bought the softwares. So there was this, there was this software that I bought that could detect the age of your system. The age of your system. Because I bought my laptop at a sale. And you know what that software told me? That my operating system is 12 years old. That is why it is cheap. So everybody say this. Now we know. Now we know. We should not buy. We should not buy. At sale. Gadgets like laptop. Because you will suffer from? Oh, okay. So I bought that. And you know what was the answer? Everybody say this. I'm a third world person. With a third world mind. Who does not respect intellectual property. Because I just want to use without paying for it. Right? Oh, um, that was a bad realization. Okay. Why did it happen? Because in my university, if there would be a raid, all our computers should be raided. Because my university did not also buy the license subjects. Because the IT people are agents of malpractice. No IT person would want to buy a license. They would rather not. And that is a truth. So today, that was my dream, and that's why I bought the license software. I bought three pieces, one for me and two for my office units. So I told myself, now I'm no longer poor because I can buy a license for myself. So that's a good thing. So that is an aspiration. Someday we can buy the things that are good for us. Okay. So after this, I'd like to show you another important point here regarding um, a sample of using multiple authors
coming from uh, different continents and how it's going to be done. Um, you don't need to read the, the material. You'll just get an author because it's just a dry run of, of, of the workshop and then put them together and then have the bibliography. Okay, for example, let's say, can you, can you, uh, can, can you write this on your seats? Okay, mentoring <laughs> is the best strategy for supervision. That's just a sample parenthesis. You wait for this. So let me go to Google Scholar. Google Scholar. So can you do it on your screen? Yeah. Okay. Then. All right. So mentoring. Teachers. And then Europe. Europe, EU. Okay, search. Okay, so from 12 European countries, right? So suppose this is the one that is your source. Can you click this one? Okay, and then you copy this. Copy this, and then put that in the note. And then put that in the note. Yes, you have a note. Shopping. Open. So I will just have a sample as one. So, um, let me write the sentence about mentoring is the best strategy for supervision. Is the best strategy for supervision. But as you see, okay, Jones, 2009. Okay, you continue. Find an American author. So you go back to Google Scholar. And then you replace European with American. American. Okay, search. So find something coming from US. Okay, here, University of Pennsylvania. Click this one. No, 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 no. The, the, the global location. The global location. You can be the APA. And then put it there. All right, so semicolon, Smith. And Ingersoll. Smith and Ingersoll. Because if there are two authors, you have to mention them. Okay, and then 2004. And then Sifonan. Okay, your role is to find the following. So we're done with America and Europe, Africa, okay, Asia. Okay, and then Australia. Okay, find three authors from those continents, and then you continue, and then you end, and then period. Because unless you do this, you will not get it right that you need to have various perspectives. But of course, in reality, you have to read. Now it's only an exercise, right? Okay, try. So you this one. Search there on your own. So I'll say it's obvious. Is it? And search. Find an Australian author. Okay. And then copy. Then put there.
Ben again, Ben and then get out. create a design. And what is that design? That you can begin with the most recent and then the most um, late. So what is the most recent 2016? Can you transfer this? Then and then it all as the beginning. Transfer it here before zones. Semicolon. And then yes. So it makes sense. Everybody say this, as a matter of custom, value the most recent. So when you write your curriculum DT, your value data, alright? Do not begin with preschool, elementary, high school, college. Because it means you finish your high school in 1942. Okay, so outdated. You begin with the most current and end up with the most late. Okay. If you write your experiences, begin with the most current and the most late. Because employers are more interested about who are you today and what have become of you. Rather than finding out where did you think you are preschool? That doesn't come out in the interview. But where did you finish your college, your university education? That is more of a question. Okay. All right. So here, after that, then when you arrange the bibliography, it is according to letters. So what is the first one? Carter. Can you pass for Carter? Oh, you can just command it anyway. <laughs> That's better. And then, okay. All right. But here we go by. Time. In the bibliography, we, we, we go by habitat. Okay. Are you learning from here? Okay. So, after this, uh, yes, sir. So, uh, can you scroll up? Scroll up here. Yeah. You say mentally is the best strategy for execution, and then we just read the title from each author, from like from which content and we didn't go into detail of that. How can we trust that they say that? Okay, that's why I said you are going to read. Uh, uh, and then select the author based on what you are reading. But purposes of illustration, okay, uh, we didn't do that because it takes time. But in real terms, you are going to write. Okay, so what do I do to make things fast? When I need, I find which are the things I need, and then I get my phone, and then I talk to my phone. Because it's very easy. Can everybody say this though? You remember better. You remember better. Know better. Know better. Learn faster. Learn faster. From all you. From all you. Because the poorest way to learn is this one. This one. That's the poorest way to learn. Yeah. And among all the senses, among all the senses, the most powerful is olfactory. 
the one that goes through your nostrils, the olfactory, because the olfactory sense nerves are connected directly to the medulla oblongata of the brain. That is why those who are drug addicts or those who take marijuana, okay, they will they will sniff it not using their mouth but using their nose. Like that. But this is being used for drugs because the senses immediately go to the brain. Because the nerve goes directly to the middle of the brain. Of the brain. That is why um, we, if we can easily sneeze if there are allergic reactions. So we have to understand how the brain works. So everybody say this. One learning principle is the more senses utilize, the more concrete the learning. The more concrete the learning. The more senses being utilized, the more senses being the more concrete the learning. So you see, you hear, you watch it move because if it moves, it becomes tactile. It becomes, you know, something different. Okay, and different senses coming from the same source will stimulate the brain to be fast in its absorption. And then, who can tell me the two kinds of memory? There is. Long-term memory and short-term short memory. What goes to the long-term memory? Are those information which are heavily laden with emotions. So, emotional connections are necessary for information to reach the LPM. That is why, can anybody say this go? If you don't feel anything in particular, Anything, anything you need anything you will not reach the health of you. So engage your, yourself in an emotional encounter. So I, I teach public speaking and then I train student speakers and I tell them this principle. Can everybody say this? If what you say, if what you say does not specify the emotion, specify use a happy emotion. Okay, so for example, if you would say that the sum of the angles about a point on one side of a straight line equals a straight angle. So what you say that, for example, to your students, even if they do not understand that matter, okay, you are making sense. What is it? I don't know. Uh, because of the presence of happiness. So everybody say this, the greatest. The greatest asset, asset of a teacher, of a teacher when he teaches, he teaches the students is a happy, is a happy mood and disposition. Yes. So those memories that are very sad, very angry, are very happy, are rarely forgotten, right? So if I will give you music, then immediately what comes to your memories are those powerful memories, anger, happiness, and sadness. Okay. All right, so, uh, did you learn from here? Okay. So after this one, I'd like to focus on another one. So what did you learn from here? You are going to? To read. Yes. But the point is, APA has changed. And I, yesterday I told you that there is now a version 7. Okay. Please search 17 critical changes in APA version 7. 17 critical changes in APA version 7. Okay. Do you want to know version 7? Yes, because I want it to be global, the first one to know. Now, can you scroll down? There is really a file for that. Critical changes in the USA.
Can you open the section on new changes in EPA version 7? Did you find it? Yes. Okay, can you open? There is a wider change. Let me slow down. Because I saw it. Put the URL 
https colon slash So what's the purpose of a DUI? The moment you, you cite this article online, immediately DOI records account of one. So my students are asking me, they said, Sir, we have already published, we have already been cited, but why why we are not counted? Okay, for citations. It is because there is no DOI to the article. So a DOI is a unique identifier. That sets your article apart from others, and your article cannot be stolen anymore because there is already a record of who owns it. So if you have money, there's always a number for every bill, right? Every bill of money, mm -hmm. there's a serial number that makes one different from all the rest. And so the same is true with the DUI. So everybody say this, if I want to publish, I will choose a journal. And that has a DUI on every article for my own protection. So number five, it's a ego. URLs are no longer preceded by retrieve from. Because before we write retrieve from, unless a retrieval link is needed. The website name is included unless it's the same as the author and web page title are in challenge price. So for example, we have here Walker, Germany avoids recession but growth remains weak, retrieve from no longer. We just put in there the URL because that is redundant. If you click the URL, you will be able to get Walker. Right? So again, this read, URLs are no longer preceded by retrieve from unless a retrieval date is needed. Number six. Okay, let's read go for ebooks. The platform, the format or device is no longer included in the reference and the publisher is included like group M, women and British and uh, start satellites and then Kindle version. So Springer nature no longer, then we just go directly. Because if you click the UI, you can access the all material. Okay. So next please. Okay. So let's read go. Clear guidelines are provided. Provided for including contributors other than authors and editors. For example, when citing a podcast episode, the host of the episode should be included. For a TV series episode, the writer and director of that episode are cited. Alright. Eight, let's read together go. Dozens of examples are included for online source types such as podcast episodes, social media posts, and YouTube videos. The use of emojis and hashtags is also explained. Okay. All right. Everybody see this today? today. In research, today. they can use YouTube as a source. Can YouTube as a source. Okay. Including, including Facebook. Facebook. Okay. To illustrate my point, you go to um, Google and then search for this. APA style, APA style for Facebook. APA style for Facebook. Can you write it? APA version 7. APA version 7. You have to mention the version for Facebook. Then search. Oh. So it's only click. I will sign my book on reference. So it's not there. But if you read the whole text of the version seven is there. Right. So here for example, you will just click that and then you would know how to sign a Facebook page. Or the other one. Okay, did you find the style on how to sign a Facebook page? Can anybody say this? 99% of the people read Facebook. Less than 1% read scientific matter. 
The world is going away from science. The world is going away from science. Why? Because we are more into social media. Did you find so many posts on fake news about coronavirus? So many. That is why I no longer read them. It's my time to die. I die in grace and smile and happiness. Because you cannot live with snake eating that you will get sick. Because among my friends, those who are afraid to die, die first. That's good for them. <laughs> so it's my time. They will welcome me. Okay. Because three ways to cite social media. Generally, with a URL, personal communication, and physical location. So how do you cite personal communication? Is it not that I told you to write your offers and then ask them and then they reply with their personal, like according to my years, 2020, okay, parenthesis, personal communication. So that is allowed. Okay, next please. Uh, is this part of the, the one that I opened? This is the one. Bibliography of an interview with AIDS. Oh, no, no. This is Twitter, right? Okay. This is Twitter. You can even cite Twitter in your search. And this is how it's going to be given. And then the in-text citation. Page 2013 said that polio is 99% eradicated. Huh? When he delivers information that he signed? When? Well, if he delivers the information, you will not be able to find it. So you cannot cite. <laughs> because it will not anyone appear in your search if he has deleted the uh, information. But he signed already and the information will disappear. Yes, it will disappear. But if you are going to cite, it will no longer um, disappear because you have meaning your cited material in the text will stay, but when you check it, it no longer will stay. Okay. So I would like to give you the um, can we go back to the 17 one? Uh, the 17 changes because I must be able to finish the Afterwards, I teach you more about that one. Number nine, let's read. The singular they or there is endorsed as a gender neutral pronoun. So no longer a religious carry depends on how often he or she is cited, but a religious carry depends on how often they are cited. Um, so please write these words. Mankind is no longer politically right. Mankind. Because that is favoring the guys. So what is the gender neutral? Instead of mankind, what will you write? What will you say? He or she. Humankind. Oh yes, That's, that is not a style. Can you write mankind? Um, and then now it is human kind. Human kind. K I N kind. Human kind. Uh, we have people interested in phonology, so mankind. Human kind. And then instead of he or she, we will just put a. So we avoid a conflict. Before, in my high school years, I was taught that, everybody say this, if the gender is not known, if the gender is not known assume the writer to be, assume the writer to be, be male. male. It was in 1980s, now no more. Okay, because you are going to use a 
plural pronoun. Even they are singular. Okay. And there is something here that I'd like to teach you about the language. Can you write this one? Never begin a paragraph with a pronoun. Never begin a paragraph with a pronoun. Yes. Because a pronoun represents a noun. So you have to establish first the noun before you can proceed with a pronoun. All right? Yes. So example, anybody say this? The headmaster, the headmaster delivered his welcome. Okay. He, he greeted, greeted the, students. the students. So you cannot begin a paragraph with he delivered the welcome. Because that's the beginning of the paragraph. So you should say he. So you cannot begin a paragraph with a pronoun. Another one, if the pronoun if. For example, it is common knowledge that because the word it represents a noun, you have to establish that first before you can use it. Okay? So what did we learn? Never use a pronoun as the first word in a paragraph. Okay. So is that helpful to you? Okay. So here. Number 10, uh, instead of using adjective as nouns to label groups of people, descriptive phrase, phrases are preferred. For so example, the poor, the ugly, the beautiful. To refer to a group of people, we say, instead of saying the poor, people living in poverty. Or another way of saying for the poor is the economically challenged people. Economically challenged. F L U I D. Okay. Okay. By fluid is meant it has it can follow different shapes. So everybody say this. In a quantity research. In a you can actually capture something real. You can capture something definite. Because quantity gives you that. So you can have a conclusion. But in the qualitative research, you cannot capture something complete from the statements of people that have no form. They are fluid. They are amorphous. So many editors would not want you to write a conclusion. What will they allow you to write? Okay? Emerging patterns. So instead of conclusions, write emerging patterns. Emerging. Okay. So why an emerging pattern? So whatever it is that you can describe as available, that is the emerging pattern. Because in conclusion, it has got to be specific, it has got to be definite, and you cannot get that from the research. Alright? And then second, anybody see this? Qualitative research has no generalizability. So meaning, whatever data you gather, cannot be used to extrapolate to the larger population. It has no generalizability because you are basing the answers from few people. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Unlike in quantitative research where you have a population, you have a sample, and you have a procedure that the characteristics of the sample are the same characteristics of the population. So you can actually generalize. So meaning, go, I am not looking for Things that, things that are concrete, generalizable, generalizable, generalizable. In quality. In quality. I am looking for new ideas, for new, new ideas. thoughts, new, new, thoughts. Paradigms, new, new paradigms, new mental models, new something new. That is the purpose when you do quality. You will extract new ideas. 
But in a questionnaire, it's not giving you ideas because you have you, you have items. They will just circle. So these are not new ideas because you have you have predetermined how they will answer. But equally, you don't cheat the respondents on how he will answer because that depends on his willingness to share information. So again, please say this: equality. Equality. You are not expected to produce recommendations because there is no generalizability. Stories of five people cannot be used to recommend to 100 people. It doesn't make sense. So, what recommendation is possible? Would you like to know? Recommendation for further research. That is the best recommendation for quality. Meaning, for example, you have five people and then they have they have violations of human rights. So your recommendation is further study. That the study be applied to a wider sample, more people coming in, and then quantitative in order to capture whether this problem is really present. So how do you call that? Recommendation for further study. You do not recommend for actions. For example, that the, that the administration, the principal will do this and do that. So the teachers will do this and do that. The students will do this and do that. No, 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 no. Because your data has no generalizability. You cannot recommend. Okay. Except, what is it? Okay. Recommendations for further study. That's the only recommendation you are allowed in a qualitative study. Okay. Have I enlightened you a little bit more to what you know? Did I cause you a better understanding of appreciation of qualitative research? Are you learning? Okay. Do you like what you have? Okay. That is good. Shall we give a hand to that? Do you like Wally? Yes. Yes. What has been my experience? I would like you to I would like to tell you the dangers. Anybody say this though? If I begin with Wally, if I begin with Wally, I will no longer be tempted to go Panty. I will hate the numbers. I will hate the numbers. Because the depth and profundity of the human condition cannot be captured by one. So, quality researchers are looking for depth and then vastness. And then they are also looking for perspective. And this cannot be taken by quantitative because in quantitative data it becomes so predictable and shallow for example if anybody says this majority, majority. but at least 80 percent of the students have blah 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 so what's that it's too shallow and for people who have been to quantity they cross over the quality they don't want to return that is why I want you to avoid that danger. To begin with quantity only and not quality. To begin with quality only and not quantity. Because you will not want the other way. And that is not good. So everybody say this. The better option is? The better option is mixed methods. Mix methods. So I will design my study. Design that there is a qualitative part. There is a quantitative part. So I can appreciate the two. So which means that if you have if you have mixed methods, everybody say this. The advantage of mixed methods say that. It's like you have a body. You have the skeletal system of bones. That is the quantity. And you have the flesh, you have the tissues okay, to cover the bones, to create the form. Because what will happen to our body if only tissues and no bones? We can't stand. We cannot move. We cannot have a form, right? 
But what will happen if you will only have all the bones <laughs> and then no tissues? We will be looking like skeletons, <laughs> right? Okay. Why are we beautiful? Because we have tissues that shape our body, and we also have bones to keep it strong. So if you have both, that is equivalent to mix. Okay? Okay. Do you recognize that? Do you not understand the beauty? So, do you want only bones and no tissues? Do you only want tissues without bones? No. <laughs> I love you. Okay, so, it's okay. But again, I tell you later, once you have that, you may not want the other side. Because go quantitative researchers will become poor appreciators of quality. Because they always want something complete. How much percent? Okay, what is the average? What is the statistical evidence? Okay. But quality does not there's a talk about that. No percentage, no numbers, only ideas. Uh -huh. But sometimes you choose one, and sometimes you have both. And sometimes it's always good to have both. Okay? All right. Any questions before I we go back to the introduction again? Yes. Yeah, instead of conclusions, you write emerging patterns. Oh, okay. So, please write. Emerging patterns in qualitative research are descriptions of what came out. As new information of the research preserving the fluidity of the data. So emerging patterns are descriptions of what came out of the data. Okay, without okay. So I think what maybe in your heart you want me to give an example of what is an emerging pattern. Okay. Can everybody say this though? Emerging pattern number one, go. The respondents who are young mothers. Generally, generally did not expect, did not expect to, be married, to be married and produce children, and produce children, children in their early years. In their early years. They, just they just love to fall in love, fall in love. And, and motherhood became <coughs> accident. <coughs> Because uh, among young people, they, they did not want to get married. Because they know they're too young to do that. They can have, they don't have jobs, no money. And so all they want is just to fall in love and then enjoy being young. And then pregnancy became an accident. And then when accident becomes a child, they will have, they were forced to become responsible. Because our society would want you to stand and, you know, Exact your responsibility on when the birth of a child. Okay, so that's the emerging pattern. That they did not really have the ambition to marry early. They did not want to get married early and produce children. All they wanted was enjoy life, being in love as young people, free. But with the birth of a child, they were forced to be responsible. Okay. And such a responsibility should only belong to older people and not young people like them. So that's the emerging pattern. And then emerging pattern number two, go. In their life, they're after go. They no longer consider being married early 
Amen. Amen. A disadvantage. Because they were able to overcome Amen. the problem Amen. of parenting Amen. with the support of the family. Okay. They were able to send their children to school Amen. and provide the basic necessities of life. So, which means that at the early stage, it's, oh my God, we are married. And then you know, so it's a problem, it's a problem. So, yes. But later on, because the child was born, the family came to help. And then the society provided jobs. And they were able to go and cope. And so, they were already happy. So, meaning the initial difficulties did not last long. Because our society is always supportive of young people so that they will not fail in life. These are emerging patterns. Meaning, in general, what do you say about how the data is coming out? And how do you express that in your own way? That is the emerging pattern. Am I stating very um, definitive facts? No. I am just trying to, dis to, to describe to you what the data were all about. Okay. Did I answer this? You cannot write a conclusion for qualitative research. So we just post emergency Yes. Okay. So what to you is a conclusion? Write it, but under the title emerging patterns. Okay? But in quantity, yes, write a conclusion, write a reco write recommendations, go, go, go. Because that is the place. So, in the introduction, I told you there were layers. Go, global, mm -hmm. continental, Southeast Asian, Southeast Asian, Asia, Cambodia, Phnom Penh, Yes. Do you end there? The answer is no. no. After that, what will you need to write? Please write this. After all the layers, please write. Please write. After all the layers, from global to local, okay, write about the research gap. Because without the research gap, that is not research. Okay. Writing a research gap is one of the most difficult things to do in research. So, I tend to give examples that you can easily find. All right, everybody say this, go. Everybody say this. I will go to a fruit store. I will go to a fruit store. Okay. Can you tell me what are the fruits? Banana. Apple, banana, what else? Okay, what else? Okay, strawberry. Okay, next question. What are not there? Guava, what else? Jackfruit. 